Okay, so this will be the last video in the basic interaction system series. I just have a few scripts to guide you through. So the first one is this interface called iInteractable. Any objects that can be interacted with in the world will implement this interface. It has just one method on player interaction, which takes an action as a parameter. Okay, the second script is this interaction controller. This component is attached to the player, and when the player presses the E key, it spawns a hitbox and checks to see if any of the colliding objects have a component attached that implement the I interactable interface. And if so, it calls the on player interaction method on that component. The last script is called examine interaction. This component holds a list of strings, which will have information about the description of the object to be printed out once we actually interact with it. And it implements the I interactable interface. Okay, so let's talk about the interaction controller. I just have one serialized field here for a transform called hitbox. So as you can see, the hitbox is attached to the player, but it doesn't actually have a collision component on it at all. It's just so that I can define the shape and then the script can take those numbers and make a box in that place. This isn't the only way to do it. This is just the way I prefer to do it at the moment for this kind of thing anyway. So we have this flag here is busy and we just turn that on and off depending on if we're in the middle of an interaction. And then if we are in the middle of an interaction, it stops us from keep checking all of this stuff here. Next, we check if the player presses the E key and then we do this physics to overlap box. Okay, so what this does is it spawns a box at a set position with a set size and a set rotation and it checks for any other colliders that overlap with it and it stores them as an array of colliders. Then we use a for each loop to go through all of the collisions found in the collisions <laughs> and we check to see if any of the components on the collisions game object implements the I interactable interface. Now, if we do, we store it in this variable here. This is what the out does. It puts it out to here. And then we call the interacted object on player interaction. So whichever thing we interacted with, we then call that, which will start the whole process of the printing and whatnot down the line. And then we call this method on interaction started. And what this does is it sets the time scale to zero. Now the time scale, you can think of it, if it's a zero, it means nothing in the game will move, okay? If it's at one, everything will move at the regular speed. If it's at 0 0.5, everything will move at kind of bullet time or half speed. So by setting the time scale to zero, we can pause our game. Now you might think, well, if the game's all paused, then how will anything move? So you can actually move things and you can do anything independent of the time scale by using unscaled delta time in your calculations rather than delta time. Uh, and also in coroutines, instead of saying wait for seconds, you can say wait for seconds real time. So those are the ways you can move things independently of the time scale. And when we call the on player interaction method on the interacted object, we also send it this method as an action. Okay. So this method on interaction finished. So this is the thing that will get called back to if you remember from yesterday's video. So this is what will get called back to. So as soon as this is finished, we jump back here and time scale set to one again and is busy set to false and everything can continue. This stuff down here is just some debug stuff I was doing, so don't worry about that. Okay, and the examine interaction is really straightforward. It just has the list of uh, dialogue that will be printed when it's interacted with. It holds a reference to the text printer, and it gets that by doing game object .find game object with tag subtitle printer, which is a tag I added to the game object of the, the subtitle text printer. 
There's other ways of doing this, but I'm just keeping it simple here. You could also serialize the field and just plug it in, but it might be a bit tedious doing it for every single object. And here's our on player interaction, uh, which is the thing that gets called through the interface of our interactable. Okay, so that's the end of the video. If you've got any questions, just drop them down in the comments below or get in contact on Discord or whatever. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.